Hi everyone! Today I have a very exciting new build to talk about with everyone. And um, this is a build I've been really looking forward to doing for a while, but I never really had a lot of time to commit to completing the build. But if you've seen my recent community post, a lot of free time has opened up for me to say the least. So I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to actually commit to completing this build, figuring everything out, and um, also add the extra challenge of doing it with components that I already have in hand. So I don't have to spend any money and I can still create something that's super cool and something that I really, really enjoy. So you guys are probably wondering which truck or car that I worked on. But before we get into that, let's talk about this one. This is my GMA GSO-1 Sawback, which is a 10 scale leaf sprung truck. And out of the box, it would have come with like a non-licensed like Willys Jeep body. But I was never a big fan of how the truck looked out of the box. Um, but unfortunately, because the sawback is a kind of a non-standard wheelbase, it's 11 point something inches, I don't remember the exact number. Most 10 scale crawlers nowadays are 12.3 inch wheelbase and a lot of bodies are um, meant for that. So it was difficult to figure out which body to fit on it, but you can see I've managed to get this XL Honcho body um, to fit on it with the, sh uh, with, with the shorter wheelbase. So now that I really enjoy the look of this truck, it really elevates my enjoyment of the truck since the look is half the fun with the trail truck. Um, but the same could not be said about its sister car, the Komodo, which, which would normally be sitting right here on the shelf. And the Komodo um, is the four linked version of the Sawback. And it came with like a non-licensed F-150 body. And I was a big fan of how the front end of the truck looked but I didn't like the side profile or the rear end, the tailgate. The rear half of the truck kind of looked a little funky, a little off to me. So because I wasn't in love with how the body looked, I ended up not using it as much, even though I love the chassis. Um, so I decided to change that and fit a body that I would actually like on it. And what better body to do than a Land Rover, which is my favorite brand of off-road vehicles. Um, but unlike most 10 scale RC Land Rovers, this is not a Defender D90. This is a Land Rover, Range Rover Classic. Uh, this is a very uncommon body to see on a 10 scale truck. So you guys probably have a lot of questions about how I managed to do this. Um, so without further ado, let's take it over to the workbench and check this thing out in detail. And um, I'll answer some of the questions you guys, you guys might have. So here we have our little Range Rover. And the first thing you're probably wondering is where the body is from. The body is from Charisma Scale Adventure. Um, it originally came on their SCA1E 10 scale trail truck. Um, and I did do a full review of that truck on my channel. And I think that SCA1E by itself is nothing too special. The only thing that's really redeeming about them, in my opinion, was they, they, they come with really interesting um, licensed bodies. So you could get this Range Rover, um, you could get like a Subaru Brat, you could get like a licensed, licensed Toyota Tacoma, like a modern one. You could get this Mitsubishi Pajero. Or in my case, if you got the limited edition version, you could convert it into a Hyundai Galloper, which is a truck that's not a lot of people even really know about outside of like Asia. Um, so that's honestly super unique and super cool of Charisma um, to do that. Most RC, 10 scale RC um, trail truck bodies you'll see are of like Toyotas, like, like 4Runners or something, or Broncos, FJs, um, Jeeps, of course. Blazers, stuff like that. Um, you very rarely see Range Rovers and Hyundai Gallopers. So if you are looking for a kind of a different um, different body to put on your scale truck, Charisma is definitely the way to go. Um, but even within Charisma, the Range Rover seems like it really got a lot of extra love and a lot of extra um, effort into it. You can see with the um, Galloper with a Pajero body. Um, it does have hard mirrors. It does have a separate hard molded grille, but the decals for the headlights and the side markers are opaque and look kind of like early Tamiya. They're, they, they don't look very good. Same thing with the side markers are just stickers. Tail lights, again, 
just stickers. This is just a flimsy little piece. Um, and then the windshield wipers are also just little stickers. Um, it does have light buckets, but it is just covered up by stickers. Whereas if we move on to the Range Rover over here, you can see it has a lot of extra details. Of course, the, the hard mirrors, hard molded grill, but the headlights look much nicer. Um, the side markers look much nicer. It's more of a translucent sticker, so it gives a little bit of color, but um, does give that nice um, actual light bucket look. Windshield wipers are actual parts. Um, the tail lights again are stickers, but they're again translucent stickers, so it does look like a little closer to an actual um, tail light. The logos are also clear vinyl stickers instead of just opaque stickers like a, like was on the um, Galloper. So a lot of extra little details on here, even this little side marker piece right there. That's a physical part, so very very cool. Um, it is stickers for the door uh, door handles. This stripe was a sticker and all the black here were stickers. Um, but other than that, it's a really nicely detailed body. Um, I believe if you got the limited edition version of this Range Rover, you could even get the iconic three-spoke Range, uh, Range Rover classic wheels. It's all very, very detailed stuff, very scale. Um, I think it's a very desirable body. But with that said, Charisma left me a very nice base for me to work with. So all I did was just kind of add my own little touches and add my own little um, improvements to it. So like I mentioned, all of this were stickers. I peeled all those off. These are now painted um, on the outside. So this should have a nice little look. It does unfortunately scratch off and it, it will be just tan underneath, which is a little bit unfortunate, but um, you can just kind of cover that up with a paintbrush or something so not a huge deal the rear bumper i also painted so it has a little bit less of a plastic look um there used to be a sea one e kind of like british style license plate back here but um i took that off because i intended to put my own little scale license plate but i can't quite find it at the moment i turned my whole place around and um I, I still can't really find it so once that turns up i'll throw that on there or maybe i'll get a different one eventually I of course threw on all these little stickers, some of the stickers here, you can see the mall, no mall crawler sticker there. Off-road your off-road, some, some MST stickers, some stickers are from Charisma, some are from Axial, just like various stickers um, that I've collected over the years. I threw on here to kind of give it more of a scale look, you can see there's an RC four-wheel drive 200,000 mile club sticker on the windshield. And then added some other various um, decals on the side as well. And these decals are actually kind of funny because um, when this tr when this body was originally on my SCA one e, um, it had these same stickers on the on this window, and it said G made, it said June Fog, it said um, XD Shock, and all that. But it was not on a G made chassis. So now it kind of seems like a like a it feels like a foreshadowing. Um, to its, its eventual um, placement on a actual G made chassis. So, very fitting um, and really happy about all of that. I think it looks really cool. I'm very happy with the look. I also tinted the windows because the windows, I believe, are also tinted with uh, stickers. So, used to me a tint for that. Also, backed the entire body in black so less light will show up behind it. And, um, just have a better look overall. Paint the hood um, flat black as well for more of that tough off-road look. Um, and then it used to have uh, kind of like the stock street style front bumper on here which had like the little fog lights. It actually looked pretty good. I'll insert a picture of it here. So you can see it looks quite different now. Um, it has much bigger wheels and tires on it now. These are the G-Made um, 1903 um, kind of uh, like, what do you call them? mud terrain um, 
Interco kind of looking tire. They're very nice tires. These are stock tires, but I really haven't seen a, a reason to replace them because they work and look really, uh, really good um, and really well. The wheels are also the stock um, plastic G-made wheels, but they are beadlocks and the whole wheel, all the wheels are filled with lots of weights. So they weigh basically as much as a steel wheel, um, more actually. So very happy with that. I think they also have a nice cool look to them as well. The front bumper, the tube bumper here is also a G-made part. Um, it's meant for specifically the GSO one. Again, it is just a plastic bumper, but it has that nice look to it. Um, and I actually prefer the plastic because if it was metal, um, it would actually get caught a lot more and hang up on obstacles a bit more. This plastic's smoother and it's able to slide over the rock a little bit better. Um, it does still have an aluminum skid plate in the front with um, a little aluminum fair lead with scale hardware. So it does add that nice little scale touch, a little bit of metal to the front, um, which is still very nice. I can add the D-rings here eventually. I haven't had those yet. You can see this um, DSM off-road recovery hook, quick release re a recovery hook here. Um, I'll show you that um, working in a second, but that also adds to the performance and the look. I thought that would be nice to put on here because even though this has a fair lead, there's not really a place for you to mount a winch. So this I think is much easier to use than a winch because um, you don't have to do the extra wiring and stuff. And also um, you don't have to, I don't have to, I didn't have to figure out a place to put a winch. So. And of course, since it doesn't use any electronics or anything, um, you can submerge this thing and it's not gonna break on you. So, I fitted the whole body with lights also. Um, you'll see the lights on later. Lots of light buckets for this. The roof rack here is from a um, Red Cat Gen 7 Pro. All the skill um, accessories, or most of them, are from the, uh, the, just how the roof rack came on that truck. All I did was I added um, this little case here that actually act it actually opens. Don't know why I'm gonna throw in there yet, but little case, a little mini Range Rover Classic for my little mini Range Rover Classic. I thought that, would, that was a cute little touch. Um, extra uh, 1903 tire up top as well um, on a G-made wheel. This is not a beadlock wheel, but it's not really going to get used, so whatever. And then it's all held in with this little net. And the net is there to hold the spare tire there. You can actually screw in the spare tire. Um, that's actually how it was on the Gen 7. But the problem with this one is where I have the roof rack mounted. It gets in, the tire gets in the way of the body clips. So. I hold it down with this little net so I'm able to take the tire out so I can take the body clips out much easier. With the body off, you'll see the major difference here is the custom rear body mount um, to fit the SUV style body. Both GSO1s actually come with more like flat stuff, like flat bodies, like a truck body and a Jeep body. Um, out of the box so they both have these shorter um, body posts front and rear and they don't include any longer body posts in the box whether you get the kit or the RTR and what you're actually supposed to do is order this optional part from Gmade which is a body mount adapter and then you're supposed to get the long body posts that go to this you can see the holes quite large so you have to kind of use the Gmade body post and this is supposed to just mount in the factory um, body post area and then bada bing bada boom you have your SUV body post. But unfortunately the mounts are not discontinued but the actual body post is discontinued and impossible to find which is stupid. Um, so I kind of had to come up with my own body mount solution um, which is why it took so long for me to mount this body onto this chassis even though I've been wanting to do it for such a long time. So the solution I went with is just went through my parts drawer and grabbed two of the Tamiya CCO2 body posts because they're quite tall. Um, mounted them to the, the front of the battery tray um, and just extended the screws 
added a bunch of these brass, brass bushings and spacers and basically used the screw to mount both the body post and the front of the battery tray. And then um, because they're also so tall and so skinny, um, I had to brace them somehow. So the middle braces are actually just straight parts of the leftover sprues from my GSO2 builds. Um, so I just cut out a couple straight bits from the sprues, drilled a couple holes, and then just screw them in. And then it's a nice and stiff um, body post, no wiggling or shaking. So that's very nice to see. It is only mounted on two points, so technically it can swivel if you push it. But these screws are um, put on so tight that it generally doesn't really move. And then also once the body is on it, it doesn't move at all. So I'm not concerned about that at all. You can see also the body pose is also kind of leaning backwards a little bit because I did want to use the factory um, holes in the rear because they just matched up close enough. So that's how that was done. Very, very proud of myself for um, this solution. It was a free solution and I think it's a solution that works very, very well. Um, the body posts are also much skinnier. So I presume that it would have been um, lighter than the G-Made part anyway. And also the G-Made body posts don't come with braces either. So I would have had to done um, I would have had to um, do this anyway, the center bracing. So I think this is just a better solution. So as far as the rest of the mods go, um, it's very similar to how my sawback is modified. Um, so the axles are basically set up the same way. These are all G-made parts for the most part. So G-made brass axle tubes, front and rear, um, aluminum, um, C-hubs, high clearance aluminum, um, steering knuckles, uh, high clearance steering link, G-made CVA axles, vastly improved the steering performance. G-Made rock sliders, which yes, are actually aftermarket. G-Made sawback metal bumper. It is kind of crooked, but it does work. And I threw this on here just to kind of fill up the space between the chassis and the body, so the body doesn't get caught on stuff. And also provides a nice little recovery point for the rear of the truck. So that'd be better on this than on my sawback, where it just ended up getting caught up on stuff. The Shocks are from a HPI Venture. Um, they're dual spring, so shorter, softer spring up top for more trail truck, kind of flat terrain negotiation, and then longer, stiffer spring for the more hardcore rock crawling, the articulation. Um, out of the box, it came with these G transition, G transition shocks. Um, which look cool and work very well. They have a lot of travel, a lot of articulation, but um, they were kind of stiff over flat surfaces. And I like the look of these shocks much better. They're also threaded body and aluminum. So very, very good shocks. Very happy I saved these from my venture before I got rid of them. So, and um, very happy uh, with these here. Before I had the Redcat Gen 7 Pro shocks on here, which had a similar look and performed okay, but they were kind of stiff over um, kind of little or smaller bumps again. So just much, much happier with these shocks. Um, and then moving to the shock towers, the shock towers are just the stock, really basic stamped aluminum parts. They're kind of prone to bending. So I threw the G-Made um, shock tower brace on here in the back. In the front, the receiver box kind of gets in the way and interferes. So I'll have to figure something else out, either find a way to make this shorter um, or throw the Junefac optional um, front mount battery tray and then just mount the battery over here and have the brace right there. But for now, it has a nice little V8 look to it, which is very fitting for our Range Rover. And I threw a bunch of weights where the ESC would usually go to kind of give that heft like an engine would have. And then the ESC is a hobby wing unit um, that's sitting inside the receiver box. And then the receiver is just a Fly Sky radio uh, receiver. 
um, that's mounted to the outside of it. And I do run the Fly Sky receiver on all of my G-Made cars because just, that's just what they come with if you get the RTR version. So just kind of felt fitting. The motor is just this typical um, 27 turn silver can. This one's branded Axial. My Komodo, my uh, Sawbax is branded G-Made, but they're all essentially the same as the Tamiya silver can motors, just with like different stickers on them. I might throw the same like heat sink on that one just just because. And then the final thing is how this recovery rope thing is mounted. If you look at the bottom here, you can see this little pulley at the back with a bearing, and then you can see the one side of the the recovery rope is mounted to the bumper post and kind of just held in place with uh, CCO2 chassis part and then you just basically loop the whole thing around around the around the pulley and then back around to the bumper um, so it's a very simple and very universal fit it's a very easy to mount on any 10 scale uh, trail truck as long as they have a generally full length full length uh, frame and it really worked out because there's a nice little gap in the middle of the transmission at the bottom that helps tunnel level everything through um, and keeps everything nice and protected and running smoothly so overall very happy with all the mods and all the upgrades to this like I said the only thing I might upgrade from here is just figure out a way to mount that mount the shock tower brace up front but otherwise very very pleased with how this is set up also Metal Gear Servo up front um, kind of basic stuff but you can see also the chassis is painted black unlike my uh, sawback also adds a little more scale factor there but let's plug the battery in throw the body back on and see how it runs but this is going to be the end of the, the workbench portion so I'll include a couple little running videos real quick and then I'll just um, I'll go from there. But this is where I say farewell from the workbench. So as always, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Um, and as always, I hope everyone has a great day and have fun with RC. So here we have the Range Rover um, with the lights on. It looks pretty cool with those marker lights on. Over here with the tail lights also looks pretty cool so I have this pretty tall box right here on this ledge of my apartment so we're gonna try to drive down it and then drive up it I'm gonna show you it using the recovery hook real quick so let's see it climb down this thing The Hobbywing ESC gives it nice resolution. It's also very quiet. So now climbing back up, um, you can see how tall this box is here. I have the front bumper kind of perched on top of there. Um, the, the front tires are actually off the ground right now. So if we try to climb this up, you can see the rear tires have to try to come up a really vertical area and the front tires come off the ground. So it's not able to get enough traction to, to hop up and the angle is so steep that even if I throttled, it's not going to come up. So this is where the hook comes in handy. So we're just going to stretch that over, hook it up onto the saw back, and then it's just going to climb right up. super easy to just unhook hook back up on your bumper there's that
and then you can just continue on your journey.